Hey guys, and welcome to this series where I'm gonna teach you 10 ways in which you can grow as a worship guitarist. You see, when it comes to growing as a worship guitarist, so many people find themselves stuck in a, a certain plateau or a certain level, and they don't really know how to grow beyond that, right? Uh, that has a lot to do with physical playing. Um, of course, we cover a lot of that at the Academy, on our YouTube channel, our magazine. We've got tons of resources in skilling yourself as it relates to your worship guitar skills. But there's also other things that you can do to grow as a worship guitarist. And that is what I wanna cover for you in this video. First of all, it's very important to have a positive attitude, right? Uh, you wanna be a champion of people, um, because we think about it, if you show up at a worship practice or at a, a service on a Sunday, if you have the opposite of a positive attitude, which is a negative attitude, that is not gonna be conducive to what you need to do. And the reason I say you wanna be a champion of people, if you're like negative, and like always criticizing people and always pointing out what's wrong or just giving people a hard time, that is not being a champion of people. And if you think about it, the word says, for God loved the whole world that he sent his only son. So the love that God has for everybody on earth is intense. And that's why the Bible says we need to love our neighbor like we love ourselves. And it's kind of funny how sometimes in a worship setting, people can forget that. They can show up to a rehearsal um, annoyed, or upset about something that maybe the songs were posted late or they changed, made a last minute change, or maybe they weren't rostered to play as many times as they wanted to, whatever the case may be, it's human nature, things get to us, but then we need to deal with that and we need to learn uh, to really get our identity and our sense of self-worth from what God has spoken over us and not let other things affect us in a way that we can show up with a negative attitude, right? So when we have that kingdom mentality, we are going to realize that when we really understand the extent of the good news, what we believe, what we proclaim, what we are there to actually accomplish, then we can't be a moaner and we can't be someone with a negative attitude. Now, that does not mean we don't address issues. There's a way to um, address certain issues that you can do with a positive attitude, even if it's talking about something that could potentially a negative subject, if you were to put it that way. But I wanna encourage you as a guitarist, always have that positive attitude because that's really what we need to carry within us, which is Christ, the hope of glory. And when we really have that, that's gotta affect our attitude and our positivity when it comes to interacting and dealing with people. Another area in which you can grow is you can learn to be flexible, right? Uh, we always joke about this and we say, blessed shall be the flexible, or they won't be bent out of shape, right? Now, as it relates to playing in a worship team, you're gonna need to be flexible because the fact of the matter is, if you are a professional musician, you're gonna have to play with some amateurs, some volunteers who aren't at that same level. So you can't get annoyed with that and actually be upset that they don't play at the same level that you're playing or vice versa. Maybe you're a beginner and then you are playing with some professional people and then you wanna get good you know, be upset because they move too fast or, or or whatever the case may be. But when you have that flexibility in the middle and you have that attitude, then you will be able to get so much further in the job at hand, the task at hand, right? Um, and it's very important to have grace for, for the people around you. Earlier I mentioned maybe uh, the worship leaders put the song list out too late. Maybe they made a last minute change to the set list. And then some people might say, why do you guys keep changing this? I'm working all the time. I don't have a lot of time to prepare my stuff. And then you go ahead and make changes to, to the set. It's really annoying. Please um, get your administration in order, okay? If you do that, that's not being flexible. It's being very rigid and it doesn't show any grace to the situation. And there's a lot of things that you might not know about. Maybe the pastor felt pressed on his heart 
to preach around a certain message that God has laid on his heart and he called the worship leader and asked him, please, can you add this song to the set list? Once you understand that situation, it changes everything. But the fact of the matter is we won't always have that understanding and therefore it's very important to have grace, you know, for your fellow uh, worship leaders, your worship musicians, um, just have the grace for people and learn to be flexible. Now, again, like I said before, um, it doesn't mean we have to let issues go unaddressed, right? If there's certain things that you feel people can do to help you um, do a better job, then, you know, that's where you practice clear communication. You can still do that with a positive attitude. You can still be flexible as you discuss that because this is the way that we can really work together as a team and learn to be better together rather than trying to be too rigid or set in your ways. Because when you are flexible and when you have grace for others, you are very powerful in the sense that God can use you for his kingdom because you can roll with whatever the circumstances bring. Another way in which you can grow as a guitarist is just to be prepared. You wanna go ahead and learn your parts for the songs and, and learn the songs well so that ideally when you're playing on a Sunday, you don't have to have your eyes stuck to the iPad the whole time to read the chords or whatever just because you didn't learn the song. Try and be prepared in such a way that you don't have to look at the chords the whole time, that you can engage with your worship team, that you can engage with the congregation. And, and that really happens when you learn your parts and your songs and learn how to be prepared when you arrive. In the same way, you want to go ahead and dial in your tone beforehand. Be prepared with your tone. You don't want to go and figure out your patches all those kind of things on a Sunday or on a Thursday or whenever you rehearse, you want to have that stuff ready and dialed in beforehand. Another way in which you can grow as a guitarist is to be on time. Now, that's easier said than done, um, but ultimately what it comes down to, it's there's a sense of respect, right? Because if you are late in the sense that the worship band is always waiting for you before they can start rehearsing, then it's a little bit disrespectful to to the rest of the band because they have to wait for you. They all have to be on time, they are ready to go, but you arrive late, you have to set up your equipment and then you just really make it hard for everyone else because the whole team is there, they've got families to go back to, they've got other things to get to. So just being on time really makes a massive difference. And when I say on time, it's just like when it's time to go, you are ready to go, you've got your gear sorted and you can, you know, get on with it with the task at hand. So it's really helpful to have a buffer when it comes to um, a Sunday morning or a rehearsal, because you know sometimes things happen and if we don't allow that buffer, then we're gonna put strain and stress on ourselves to try and make it within a, a certain a lot of time that might not be possible. Like let's just say if one of the kids runs in the house, falls down, and you have to kind of console them and put on a plaster or band-aid or whatever, that's going to take a couple of minutes. So if you don't have a bit of a buffer on your way to rest or on the way to a Sunday, um, that's going to disturb your sense of peace and calm because now you would have rushed or run or get there late or whatever, and then you are not in that state of rest and peace and calmness, which is very important when it comes to worship so that you can have your focus again on the task at hand. Another way in which you can grow as a guitarist is learn to pay attention to your body language. Now I don't have the exact stats, but it's something crazy that 80% of communication happens through body language or what's known as non-verbal communication, right? So you wanna kind of pay attention to uh, what you say and how you say it as it relates to your body language. So I'm not talking about what you say with your mouth, I'm talking, what do you say with your body? Are you kind of standing there, not really engaging with the worship team? Are you uh, kind of in your own world? Uh, are you having your eyes closed the whole time, displaying and, and forgetting what's going on around you? Nothing wrong with having your eyes closed, but you want to make sure that your body language is something that's connected with the whole team. And it's not something that's just focused on you. You know, that's why it's important. You wanna have eye contact with the, the your team members. Right, look at the drummer, look at the bass player, look at the worship leader, you probably can't make eye contact if they're looking forward, but look at them, look at the rest of the team, smile, right? That might kind of feel weird because you might feel a bit um, exposed standing on stage with an instrument and everyone looking at you, but that's where you have to step up and be 
a leader. And that's why I say it's not just the worship leaders who lead worship. It's the whole team that can lead worship. And we can do that very effectively and confidently when we level up in terms of our body language, look people in the eye, smile, engage with your team and your congregation. Now, you need to understand that there's a concept known as mirror neurons. It's just when you are with somebody, you're, you are going to, without knowing it on a subconscious level, you might mirror. There's some neurons in your physiology that's going to mirror what the other person is doing. So that's why if you're around somebody that's like really excited and happy and they smile a lot, well, then naturally you're going to find yourself smiling. But if you, if you were somebody who's a bit more negative, um, has got a bit more of a closed body language, you might find yourself doing that as well, right? So that's mirror neuron. So when you understand how that works, you can actually understand that you have the ability to activate people around you based on your body language because that is non-verbal communication. People can sense if you're stressed and annoyed or you don't really want to be there or people can sense when you're disconnected or maybe you're checking Facebook while you're waiting for the rest of the band to sort out their sound check. That is kind of a sense of being disconnected and we know that the Bible says God commands a blessing where there's unity. So one of the ways in which you can show and display that is really to pay attention to your body language and knowing that you can actually activate people around you like that. Another very important way in which you can grow as a guitarist is learning how to maintain your gear. You want to obviously make sure that your guitar is tuned before you start playing, but in terms of intonation, that is something that you want to make sure your neck is adjusted the right way so that when you play all over the guitar neck, everything is uh, what we call the intonation is intact. It sounds good. You've got fresh strings on your guitar. Your cables are working. If you've got a pedal board, all your pedals and your patch cables are fine. If you're using a Kemper like I do or a Line 6 Helix or whatever, that your patches are dialed in. So it's just maintaining your gear, knowing that it works, knowing how it works, and having that stuff ready so you can show up and again, do the task at hand. We are there for a reason. And if your gear is maintained and set up, that's gonna help you show up for that next level. Another way in which you can grow as a worship guitarist is learning how to go the extra mile. There's a saying that says there's no traffic jams on the extra mile, right? And that's very, very important to just have that attitude where you can really help with wherever help is needed, right? And whether it comes down to rolling cables or carrying a speaker or, you know, taking a, a band member out for a coffee or just being more intentional with relationship building, these things are so, so important. And if you think about it, when you have a one-sided view of your job as a worship guitarist, you might think, as long as I sound good, I show up and I play my parts, I've done my job, rolling cables, uh, carrying a speaker, that's the sound team's job. It's not my job. Or um, having to take somebody out for coffee or being intentional with relationship building. That's not part of the job description of being a worship guitarist. Well, it actually is because we need to, that's the ultimate commandment, love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, and strength and love our neighbors like ourselves. That's all about relationship. It's all about serving and it's all about displaying love and being the demonstration of what we believe we carry, which is Christ in us, the hope of glory. When you have a real understanding of that, then it becomes much easier to go the extra mile and that changes the atmosphere like nothing else. One more way that you can grow as a worship guitarist is learning how to bring energy and enthusiasm to everything that you do. You know what? Your energy and the way that you carry yourself and conduct yourself, that is infectious, right? People will uh, respond to that because you are, you are um, positive, you are smiling, and you are really just there at a different level of energy. And you can realize very soon that you can either lift people up around you or you can bring them down. And I found that the best way to lift others up around you is to have energy and enthusiasm for the task at hand. Now, another great way in which you can grow is learning how to be coachable. Now, the word says that the greatest among us shall be your servant, right? If you looked at Jesus, he washed the feet of his disciples. Um, he did not walk around with a massive ego, even though he was and is the greatest among us, right? But that's why as guitarists, we need to have that 
attitude of being coachable. You can always learn something new, whether it's improving in your guitar skills, whether it's learning more about music, whether it's learning more about your people skills. There's always room for growth and God is into growth because he wants you to multiply your talents and do the most with what you've got. And the way that we do that is to realize that we need to be coachable. Right, another way in which you can grow as a worship guitarist is study what worship is all about. I'm not talking about voicings and tones and all those fun stuff. I'm talking about understanding what the act of worship is all about. Why does worship exist? What does it do? Learning the power that proper uh, worshipers wield when you learn to worship in spirit and in truth. The real purpose that God has created and intended worship to be, right? When you learn and study more about that, you will also grow in your authority and in your ability to transfer that knowledge and to lead people into God's presence because we know that His presence melts mountains like wax. Uh, there's times of refreshing in His presence. That is really what we need in this day and age that we live in. And don't just be a worship guitarist. Be a worshiper in spirit and in truth. Be a practitioner of a lifestyle of worship. So it's not just something you do when it's a rehearsal and a Sunday, but it's a lifestyle of worship and understanding that the Word says, do everything as unto God. So what I've just given you now is 10 very important tips that I think if you employ these and if you focus on this again, you will grow in leaps and bounds as your worship guitarist. And none of that had anything to do with scales or chords or voicings or tones or whatever the case may be. These are things that are easy to do, that you can focus on and really elevate your skills and your worship guitar playing by focusing on what we covered in this video.